Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams will meet behind the Trade Fair, behind Zenith College, at the Life Cathedral in the Zoe Chapel. Today I want to use today and probably uh, tomorrow to capture uh, a question that I was asked. You know, some time ago I spoke about uh, in John uh, 21, 15 when I spoke about Jesus um, and Peter and the way um, Peter betrayed the trust of uh, Jesus with his denial. And then when Jesus woke up, uh, Jesus asked Peter three questions. And the three questions are, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And Peter, um, do you love me? Now, and I explained that the first time Jesus said, Peter, do you agape me? I mean, do you love me on condition? First of all, I said, uh, Jesus asking Peter three times, he said to Peter, something has happened between us. Three times you denied me. We're not going to sweep it under the rug. Let's bring it out and let's talk about it. And Jesus wanted an assurance from Peter. Of what kind of love Peter had for him. And then Jesus asked Peter, do you agape me? And then Peter said, I feel you. And he asked him again the second time, Peter, do you agape me? And then he said, Lord, I feel you. But the third time, Jesus dropped down the bar and said, Peter, do you feel me? And Peter said, Lord, as for that one, you know. So Jesus raised the bar too high, and Peter said, I can't climb to that, I can't climb to that height. The love I have for you is the brotherly love, let feel you Adelphus. Let brotherly love continue. But I do not have agape. Maybe with time I might get to agape. So Jesus dropped down the bar and said, okay, now do you feel me? And Peter said, that one. And I said, when trust is betrayed, trust must be earned back. Trust must be earned back. You can't just, I mean, forgiveness is instantaneous, but trust is not instantaneous. I don't have to trust you because, I mean, that's what it is. Trust has been betrayed, but you have to earn my trust with a series of actions that you take. And then somebody asked me the question, so what should we do to earn the trust of the people? And I have a couple of principles, almost about eight or nine principles, I think nine principles, and I'll let us go through each and every one of them because now I'm getting back questions in terms of feedback and I like them so that I can explain things further to people. Number one, I said, there is always a petrine pathway for the restoration of trust. There is a pathway we need to take. And there is a petrine, that is Peter's pathway. And there is also the prodigal son's pathway in order to end uh, the trust. Now, number two, that is how they did it. How Peter earned the trust of Jesus all over again. And how the prodigal son earned the trust of his father all over again. Now, so... These are the, uh, the first principle. Number one, there has to be an open discussion of the event. We need to talk about it. Don't sweep it under the rug. Let's not pretend that nothing happened. Something happened. Something happened that betrayed trust. Let's, let's, let's focus on what happened. When I say let's focus on what happened, let's talk about it. Let's discuss it dispassionately. Let's discuss it. Let's bring it out in the open. Because sometimes when you switch some things under the carpet, it will stink. So we need to bring it up what happened. And then give each one uh, a, a, a space uh, to, to say what they thought happened. And then, now number two, it is, it is not just enough to discuss it. Number two, there has to be an admission that trust was betrayed. There has to be an admission that trust was betrayed. If you betrayed my trust, you have to admit 
to me that, listen, I blew it. That's how we go to God. The Bible says, for if we confess our sins, we did something wrong. But he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But there has to be admission. We have to say, yes, I did it. There has to be an admission of the trust that was betrayed. You have to admit it. Then the next one, it's a, a humility and remorse that leads to apology without giving reasons for the betrayal. I said a humility and a remorse. You have to show the person, the betrayer must show humility and remorse. You know, that would lead to an apology and you don't give reasons for uh, the betrayer. Because if you give reasons, then the reasons justifies the act. But there has to be a humility on the part of the person who betrayed. And then, uh, and then a remorse. That means this thing, I won't repeat it again. And that's what Peter said. If you remember, after the incident, the Bible said Peter went somewhere quietly and he cried. So the, the, there's some remorse factor. You know, sometimes people say, oh, trust me, trust me, but there's no remorse for the betrayer. That will not, you can't demand trust. Trust is end. And by these series of actions, you end the trust of the person. Now, the next principle that is uh, uh, very important, uh, there has to be sometimes a restorative act. That means there has to be a restorative act. If there was a loss on the part of a traitor, uh, to, um, to the betrayed, the person who was betrayed. There has to be a restorative act. And you look at repentance this way. Um, Zacchaeus said, listen, those that I stole from, those that I took away this thing, I'm going to return it to them. So sometimes there has to be a restorative act if there was a loss that can be restored. If there was a loss that can be restored, then we need to what the road of restoration we call it restitution you, you get it the, the, we, we call it restitution sometimes there has to be a restitutive act there has to be an act of restitution there has to be an act of restoration on the part of the traitor to the betrayed now and then I like to say this you see Jesus made a statement, and the statement he, he, he made, or, or maybe let, let's say John, and Jesus said, by the fruits you know them. And John said, it is not enough to say that you've repented, but he said, go and bear forth fruit, uh, go and bear forth fruit worthy of repentance. That means I don't just want the, conf the conviction of repentance, I just don't want the confession of repentance, I want the conduct of repentance. So, when trust is betrayed, trust must be earned. And these are the little things that you do to earn back trust. See you later.